doing. Hope all is well. Um, just wanted to release this dream. Something that was on the Lord's heart. And I just wanted to share this with you. This was on July 25th. The Lord had given me this dream. And in this dream, in this dream, it took place that I was almost like in a city. It was pretty much like a city setting. And it was a homeless man. And this homeless man was asking people for help. And every single person walked by him. I watched. Everybody walked past this man. And he was asking, can you please help me? Can you please help me? Do you, do you have spare change? Can you please help me? And I looked at him. And I said to him, I'll help you. I'll help you. So I ended up helping him, got him food, got him different things. And I remember being in like a court setting after it was just like, he. I knew that he had a warrant out for his arrest and I went to go take care of it for him. And it, it ended up being, I remember the number that was said 20,000. The number was 20,000 that, uh, that he, he ended up owing for that and I gave everything that I had everything that I had I gave and I, I know that the remaining balance was about uh, 1,800 and 1,830 that's what I remember seeing after I paid it because I had gotten the paper and I was looking and he said to me I can't afford this I don't know what I'm going to do I, I don't have a job. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I told him, I'll help you. I'll help you. And then I woke up from the dream. And this is what I wrote down when I woke up. I woke up this morning with a heavy heart for people who are lost, homeless, the people who are on drugs. Now, again, how I felt was such a weight on my heart. So I woke up this morning with a heavy heart for the people. When I tell you this was God's, this was God's heart and he made me feel how he felt and my heart was broken. So the ones who were lost, homeless, the people who were on drugs, the ones who had no hope and no one to help them. We need to tell them about Jesus and how much he loves them unconditionally. We need to pray for them and we need to help them and tell them about the Father and how much he loves them. And for us to let them know that he has a place for them. Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then these were the words, Lord. Uh, these were the words of the Lord after this. After I started writing this down, the Lord spoke and I wrote down what he says. He says, I will not abandon you. I will care for you. You will never feel alone when I am with you. You will never feel lost when I am with you. You will never go hungry when I am with you. Just come to me with everything and lay it at my feet. I will protect you. Everything will be okay. Just come to me, the father says. He says, I see the hurts. I see the scars and I see the bruises. I will take them away from you. Give me your, he says, give me all that you are. No, I'm sorry. Give me your all. That is all you need to do. I am the living water. For the sinner, I will forgive you. For the homeless, I will shelter you. For the hopeless, I am hope. For the broken, I am the restorer. For the weak, I am your strength. And for the lost, I am the straight and narrow path. So right after that, I just thank God for those words. Because again, those are not my words. I, I'm telling you, these are not my words. These are the words of the Lord. He said, for the sinner, I will forgive you. So it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past. The Lord says, I will forgive you. For the homeless, he says, I will shelter you. God is the shelter. He is our shelter. If we allow him to be, he will shelter us.
For the helpless, I am hope. Glory to God. For the broken, I am the restorer. For the weak, I am your strength. And for the lost, I am the straight and narrow path. I just thank God for that. You know, we go through life and we feel lost. We feel trapped. And we need to just allow God to move on our behalf. We need to just trust God with everything. You know, he, he tells you right there. He's all these things and more. He's all these things and more. You just got to trust in him and give him your life. Stop wasting time because that's all you're doing. You're wasting time that is borrowed. We are on borrowed time. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody. Tomorrow is not promised to me. Tomorrow is not promised to you. We need to make a decision and we need to choose now. Stop wasting. Stop wasting time. We need to choose now. Make a decision. I'm saying to you, make a decision right now. It's either you're going to serve, you know, the God of this world, which is Satan. Or you're going to serve the creator of everything, which is the Lord. You need to choose. Remember remember in the Bible, Jesus says, nobody gets to the Father but by me. So we just need to ask Jesus into our hearts. If we are, if we've never received Jesus Christ, if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's time to make that decision now. It's, it's time to make that choice. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to keep living your life the way that you want to live your life? Or do you want to or do you want to do what God wants you to do? Do you want to choose life? Because when you choose Jesus, you choose life. You choose life. It doesn't say in the Bible that when you choose Jesus, everything's going to be cupcakes and ice cream. No, that's just the beginning. Because Satan, once once you choose Jesus, Satan tries to attack you to get you to get you to say, hey, this is too much. I can't do this. I can't do this. Then he tries to throw all these things at you and you're like, Lord, if this is what it is choosing you, then why is this so hard? Let me tell you something. It's worth it. It's worth it. Read, read in the Bible of all the things that are promised to us. Read about when you choose Jesus, what happens? You receive eternal life. You're like eternal, eternal life. Yes, eternal life. Eternal life. Jesus is the life giver. He is, he is everything and more. And he tells you that there'll be no more tears, no more pain, no more sickness, nothing. When we, when we pass from this life on to the next and everybody has to pass. But it's just like, you know, Lord, I trust you and I choose you. Even though it might seem hard and this road that I'm going, you know, this path that I, I'm on might be a lot bumpy. But I know, Father God, that you got me. You got me, Lord. And that's how I look at it. I'm like, Lord, even though I'm going through all this turmoil and stuff like that, I trust you with everything I trust you with everything I need you Lord more than anything that's how I look at it I need the Lord more than anything more than anything it doesn't matter what I'm going through it doesn't matter what I'm facing Lord I need you because he's the one who gives me everything when I wake up in the morning, the breath, even, even to wake up in the morning, I'm like, thank you, Lord. Like, when is the last time that you thank the Lord for waking you up in the morning, for giving you that breath, that strength that you have in your body, the ability and the capability of doing what you do every day? That's the Lord. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't nothing else. It ain't nobody. That's the Lord. He's the one. 
who gives you that drive. He's the one who gives you that strength. He's it's him. And we 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 don't we don't look at it as like, you know, it's it's just like whatever. Whatever. It ain't nothing. I I once talked to somebody and they're like, you know, tomorrow is promised to me. I says, No, it's not. Yes, it is. It says it in the Bible. I'm like, okay, no. Last time I checked, it says tomorrow's not promised to anybody. Because that's, that's what it is. Tomorrow's not promised to anybody. You know, you can go to sleep and not wake up. But here's the thing is, why wait? Why wait to find out where you're going when you die? Or before you die. Why wait? Why are you going to risk that? Why would you want to risk that? To say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll wait last minute. Last minute to receive the Lord. I'll, 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 I'll wait. I'll wait. You know, we, we look at it like it's nothing. When it is something, it's huge. It's big. We need to make the decision. You need to choose now. And you need to live you need that. You you need to live that righteous life the, to the best of your ability. You know we slip up every single day, but it's like, Lord, forgive me. Help me to not make that mistake anymore. I repent. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Father God, for doing that, and refrain from it. Don't do it anymore. Stop from doing it. Just stop. You know if you if you're doing something that you don't want to do, just. Stop. It's just, it's just as easy as that. Just stop. Just stop doing it. Just don't do it anymore. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. Just stop. Lord, I trust you. If you trust God, just stop. Because he, he got you. He, he won't let you fall. He won't let you slip up. God is he, He's awesome. He's merciful, he's kind, he's loving, but also he corrects us. And that's the best thing about it. Like a father to his child, you know, we do a lot of things and we, we act like we get away with it. But nah, when, when the Lord wants to get your attention, he'll get your attention and he'll correct you. And the reason why he corrects you is because he loves you. If, if God didn't love you, then he wouldn't correct you at all. He'd be like, yeah, whatever. I don't care about him, but that's not the case. He does. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross for us, for you and for me. So make the decision. Make that decision today. Stop wasting time. Just say it. Lord, I choose you. And I give you everything. I give you everything that I am. Everything that I am. And completely surrender to the Lord. Lord, I completely surrender to you. Even if you have to get down on your knees and say it. Lord, I cannot do this anymore. I need you. I need you, Father God. I need you more than anything. I surrender my life to you. I need you to move on my behalf. I want you in my life, Lord. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Fill me with your presence. Jesus, I need you more than anything. Man, we just need to... You just need to realize that life is precious. Life is very, very precious. And even if you are saved and you know somebody who's not saved, and this a lot of times happens, and it happens to a lot of people, is they'll have a loved one and the loved one passes away. And then you question yourself to say, I wonder if they knew you, Lord. I wonder if they ever received you as 
Lord and Savior. I wonder, I wonder. We need to stop saying, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, because we, we have so many opportunities for us to share with people the good news, which is the, the news of Jesus Christ. And we don't. So we need to be sure.